And let's just go to the first presentation, who is uh, Bulgarian and uh, Sp Spanish, but they have been studying in Denmark on DTU. So it's a very international presentation, uh, and I think I will let them introduce themselves. So uh, welcome. Hi. Well, uh, good morning. Uh, we're going to present the findings from our, from our thesis that we finished uh, this last summer. It's on uh, risk mitigation from a lean perspective. Uh, we began by researching and analyzing the current practices and projects in the industry. Uh, it is widely known that, the, in, that in the industry the project failure is quite high. Um, we define specifically for the purpose of our thesis project failure as not meeting the, the, the project objectives of time, cost, and quality. And most specifically, we focused on time. Sorry. We need a bit of uh, it's a Can we see also here? There we go. Yeah. But you have to use the uh, arrows. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning from me as well. Uh, the agenda for today, we will guide you through our study. We will begin uh, with a brief introduction of ourselves, then we will present the problem statement and hypothesis that we've been uh, developing, the case that we've been working on, and we will share some of the findings of uh, our report. Uh, finally, as a conclusion of our presentation, we will uh, pose a few alternative uh, questions on the topic and invite you for open discussion. Well, this is us. Um, there should be pictures there, but... Uh, well, I'm Cecilia, and I'm a, I come from Spain. I'm a building engineer from the Polytechnical University of Madrid, uh, but I've been studying for my master's here at DTU in engineering management. Uh, my name is Marina, and I'm a civil bridge engineer from Sofia, and a recent graduate from DTU management. Uh, we, we did our, our, our thesis uh, with collaboration with MT Horgo and under the supervision of uh, Sten Punk. So as I, as I mentioned previously, well, we focused on, on time and the, project and the time overrun in the projects. And through our research, it became very clear to us that, that there is an existing gap between the theory that all the scholars are researching into and the actual practice. So we were thinking about how is the way to actually close the gap between what is being researched and what is actually happening on site. We have uh, looked into the topic of uh, risk management in Lean under the bigger picture of uh, project management and organizational theory framework. And uh, we believe that there's a, risk, uh, there's a connection between risk management and Lean in the fact that risk management reduces uncertainty and Lean increases uh, stability of the project. Therefore, we have uh, decided to establish our case and investigate this connection more closely. Um, due to the hypothesis, uh, we have uh, focused on, um, cons on our, our research question focuses on construction project risk with implications on scheduling and how actually we can assess and mitigate those through binding these th two theories of risk management and lean. We have developed two uh, sub-questions uh, that regard uh, the implementation of specific risk management tools and uh, lean principles in a proactive manner in order to uh, uh, investigate the uh, risk. And uh, we have uh, a second uh, research question based on the implementation of fuzzy logic into risk analysis of uh, construction projects. Uh, we're having slight problems with the presentation. <laughs> you should actually be able to see the, the risk model that we used. Um, yeah, sorry about that, <laughs> but I'll just explain it. Um, well, there, various, there are various risk models uh, that can be applicable. Uh, because of the nature of construction, uh, we decided to choose a, a model that was uh, dynamic, that could be applied in all levels of the organization, and that, had, uh, and that could also be applied uh, throughout the entire life cycle of the, of the project. Uh, the model that you can't see, unfortunately, uh, is proposed by Smith in 2006, and it contains a feedback loop which gives, gives room to, for continuous improvement and a platform for IPD. 
um, in our risk, uh, the risk management model and the case, we wanted to focus on changing the, the, sh the, the focus from the activity to a flow focus. And we use the lean tools that aid to this, increasing the reliability of the flow. Okay, um, should we run it from the... Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we will have a new stat maybe. <laughs> But if you actually put that one up, then I can uh, yeah. show the... Yeah. Oh, now with the actual model that we used. <laughs> mm. <coughs> okay, we'll try to explain the case study. Um, we worked on a case uh, finished from uh, MT Hoygod. It was actually Novo Nordisk uh, domicile in Bausberg. Since we were focusing on construction project risk, uh, our sta starting point is uh, the time of the pro project objective. Then we have uh, made uh, several uh, interviews and uh, uh, meetings with the project managers of the company and uh, we have uh, collected uh, different sets of data regarding the risk that they uh, met during the construction. With this uh, data, uh, we run uh, two uh, lines of risk analysis simulation. One with uh, the data itself without any change, and the second round with implementing lean tools and reducing uh, the probability of occurrence of risk due to implementation of lean tools. The output of both risk analysis was a percentage of time overrun of the schedule, and then we have made a comparison of the results of the two loops. As an input, for the, as an input data for our case, we use a risk register that comprises of risk factors, the probability of occurrence, the impact, and a series of rules and constraints that uh, link cause and effect. For the, for the lean simulation, uh, we used, of course, the same uh, register, so we could compare, but we decided uh, to reduce by a generic 10% the probabilities of occurrence. This 10% was based on the smart market uh, lean report uh, by Mike Rawhill, and it was uh, approved and agreed upon with the professionals at MT Horker that we consulted. We have decided to uh, use fuzzy logic into the modeling of the risk analysis uh, since it is believed that it's uh, best functioning uh, for uh, uncertainty and subjectivity uh, data sets. Uh, it also has some advantages during the tr uh, in comparison to traditional methods uh, like uh, giving less falsified results uh, than uh, pr simply probability methods under un uncertain. Uh, data set. Uh, as a limitation, we also had to decide uh, what is the granularity of the data that we're, that we're inputting and also when in the life cycle should we apply this model. Uh, of course, we also have to mention that all the data inputted in the model is subjective, so there is, it's not an exact science, there is room for error. And on this slide, there's uh, several plots of the program that we used. We used fuzzy logic uh, from MATLAB, and we began by inserting all the uh, risks from our initial risk register. Then we associated every risk with the probability of occurrence that the project managers have assessed. 
and uh, we have connected the risk with uh, the impact. We have created the relationship with between the different risks in order to uh, for the program to calculate uh, the percent time overrun of the schedule. And uh, the 3D surface plot in the middle, it uh, presents a comparison of uh, two risks. Actually, the one here is a design error, and the other one is uh, ground pollution. And this plot, it uh, represents uh, the individual and combined effect of those two risks on uh, the time overrun. Um, so after we after we run the simulations and obtained the results, uh, we concluded that the use of fuzzy logic uh, was very useful for uncertain and complex environments where the data is very vague. And also that the various scenarios that we run uh, represent reasonable results, according again to the professionals that we spoke to. So we can, we can assume that our model maps reality in an adequate manner. Uh, one of the most important uh, results that we got was that when we reduced the probability of occurrence of the risk with the 10% due to implementation of lean tools, we could get more than 15% reduction on the time schedule of the project. And it actually proves that if uh, a small change can actually uh, bring bigger benefits to uh, the project. And finally, uh, the conclusions from our, from our thesis. Uh, risk management and lean uh, separately have gained a lot of importance in the research community. Um, but it is, it is often quoted that they need a boost in imp implementation in order to be uh, more widely implemented in practice. So we, we propose that um, linking these two theories together can actually close the gap between the theory and the practice. And due to specificity of uh, construction projects, a direct uh, implementation of lean cannot be uh, su uh, suggested. It's uh, better to be uh, thought as a lean construction uh, philosophy that need to be used rather than pure lean. And then uh, uncertain and dynamic environments uh, require flexible or risk management where the data is very vague. And uh, it should be focused on knowledge sharing, both inter and interorganizational. Depending on the different uh, level of uncertainty of the data that the project managers uh, have, they can choose between probability and possibility tools to uh, analyze the risks on site. We also concluded that the combination of risk management and lean tools, such as uh, failure mode and effect analysis with last planner, uh, they work together in a energetic manner uh, very positively. Yeah, and uh, in conclusion, we believe that uh, applying uh, lean construction into uh, risk management processes can be very beneficial uh, for the project. Uh, throughout our work, we have met uh, or came across different theories that uh, shed alternative uh, perspectives on the topic, and uh, we have pointed out uh, three of them here. Um, we will go through them, and then uh, we are open for discussion. Uh, we begin by posing the question if, if lean actually reduces, and to what extent the probability of risks occurring. And especially, can we actually measure that, and how can we measure this effect? Uh, we have been uh, also interested in uh, some of Decker's work on organizational models of uh, risk procedures. And we actually uh, thought that it might be useful for the risk management of uh, pro projects if uh, there's a mix between a more rigid following of procedures uh, as a top-down approach plus uh, a more cognitive understanding of the processes. Uh, of all employees when uh, there's a novel and uncertain circumstances. Uh, Pasquara and Court recently posted the idea of using knowledge uh, as an eighth flow, considering an extra flow. Uh, we would like to pose the idea of including risk in, into that eighth flow, which is knowledge. And so, thank you very much. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So does anyone want to comment or maybe answer some of the questions that they put on for discussion? Yeah. 
Hello, my name is Simon. Uh, maybe just to clarify, uh, do you s suggest that the, the project manager on a project uh, spend some of his time gathering data and plotting it, and plotting it into the model you presented as a, as a way of his risk management, or, or is that somewhere off-site? Uh. Yes, we believe that the, the model that we suggested can be used on a very early stage of uh, the project and it will be beneficial to uh, have an understanding or vision of how much uh, you will be uh, uh, overrunning uh, the schedule at an early stage by sitting down with uh, your project managers and uh, assessing the probabilities of occurrence of all the risk that uh, happened before on a similar type of project. So we thought about doing it in a proactive manner in the tender phase, rather than uh, later on when it's probably a bit too late to mitigate some of the risks. Good morning. Um, I would like to know how you came up with the idea to do um, this topic, risk management and lean. Thank you. <laughs> I think Don't it uh, was a long journey. We wanted <coughs> to optimize uh, scheduling to begin with, and then uh, we thought that it's not just uh, simple tools that you have to implement. There should be uh, some uh, lean philosophy in uh, this process in order the whole company to gain benefit out of it. So it's, it started with, a, our thesis actually started thinking about being a, um, a schedule optimization. Then we realized that most of the problems with schedule have to do with risk, so we changed into risk management. And then we started looking into lean as well and how we could combine the two of them. Because when you uh, optimize a schedule, you actually look into all the seven flows and uh, you see that there's a lot of risk in every one of them. So they're very much interrelated. Could, could we say that, that your thesis gives us a strong ar argument for uh, introducing lean uh, methods into construction as a way of, uh, of uh, reducing risks? Is it that simple that, that your, that your uh, exercise here gives us a quantitative well, basis for arguing for lean as a risk management tool? We would like to believe so, yes. Yes. Uh, it's not only our thought, uh, we based our model on uh, existing uh, measurements for uh, benefiting from uh, lean implementation. And it has been done on uh, some small uh, projects, uh, but yeah, we we checked it on the case at the MT Folgot, which was quite big, and it still works. <laughs> yeah, could I ask another one? Uh, this is where it becomes very concrete for us as lean people when you suggest that that we introduce an eighth an eighth flow. Uh, when you say talk about knowledge and risk, uh, do you mean knowledge about risk? Is is that what should be? specified as an eighth stream or eighth flow uh, and who should provide this knowledge uh, who has this knowledge when we talk about the well organization of the project is it the project manager or is it is it the co collective introduction of, of knowledge about risk do you get my question yeah mm. Um, well, actually, it was not us who suggested uh, knowledge as the eighth flow. We just decided to add risk to that knowledge. Um, as far as we understood it, uh, when they proposed knowledge as the eighth flow, it was uh, the sharing the information of what happens uh, on site and as an inside organization, sharing what happens in different projects and different construction sites. Mm -hmm. So it's just um, continuous learning and, yeah. and feedback. Yeah. And risk, it, uh, it, it is present in the seventh in the seven flows as uh, the external environment, but uh, still, if it is incorpor incorporated as uh, knowledge uh, before 
another activity uh, that would improve uh, at least the time schedule, the one that we've been looking for? Because many times the risks that occur are actually the same ones, the same errors being done over and over again. So there must be something wrong. There must be, why isn't it uh, predicted or studied more to avoid those risks that are occurring constantly? So if we take them into consideration separately before an activity can begin, then that's our suggestion. I've got Rolf and the Nella. Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Rolf Simonsen. I'm from the Clients Association of Denmark and the value creating construction process. Oh, but uh, also regarding, uh, actually I think you touched upon it now, but, but as risk as the eighth flow, I think that the whole concept of the, the look ahead plan is risk management. So the seven other flows are actually uh, trying to handle risk. Um, but, and then we were talking about as a suggestion that maybe uh, actually Michael suggested that you could look at, at uh, possibilities as maybe an eighth flow because everything else, when you look upon risk, it's, it's uh, often the negative side, but you may also uh, an uh, analyze uh, activities for possibilities to do it better, uh, which is not being done in the, uh, in the uh, look ahead planning as for now. So <laughs> trying to answer or comment on your question, you don't need to reply if you don't want. Do you want to reply? Well, uh, I think it's a valuable suggestion to what we could have done or somebody else could do. <laughs> Hello. Uh, hi. Um, my understanding of what Pasqua and Court say is that the eighth flow is shared understanding and shared understanding of the conditions of satisfaction. I think it's really, really important that the team have a shared understanding of the risks and they put their arms around the risk and manage it collaboratively. Anything which helps the team to do that has to be a good thing. But I think it's very dangerous to see risk as a flow because all the other flows, we want to make flow. And yet suddenly here we've got risk and we want to stop it. Um, so let's have a shared understanding of the risks that might be coming down the pike towards us so that as soon as we see them, we can stop them. Let that be the final <laughs> remark. <laughs> and let's give a hand to Marina and Celia.